Hi folks, it's Dr. P. In lab 13, you're going to build a finite state machine that acts like a traffic light at an intersection between a main street and a side street. You should be able to see the progression from green to red lights on each street. My criterion for whether or not this works is whether or not cars would get into an accident at the intersection. This is a tricky lab to build because there are no user inputs. Everything is based on feedback. There are timers that use the 555 timer to determine whether or not the light should be green or yellow. Those timers are triggered by asynchronous outputs from the finite state machine. The outputs of the timers are inputs to the finite state machine. Then there are also synchronous outputs that control each traffic light. So this is actually a hybrid melee and more machine. Because this lab is built off of so much feedback, it's also harder to break into discrete steps like we've done with other lab circuits. This means it's going to be crucial to show up prepared with minimized equations. Keep careful notes of what's going on on your breadboard. Use wire colors as much as possible to distinguish different signals. We'll start by building the monostable timers and make sure that they work by using active low push buttons to check them. Then we'll build the finite state machine and ensure that the states are correct. Finally, we'll build in the synchronous outputs, tying everything together. Ready? Let's do it. What I've done here is built the mono stable timers. I just want to make sure they work before I spend a lot of time building the circuit and find out that maybe I built them wrong. So what I've done is rather than having them be triggered by the finite state machine, which is what will ultimately happen, is I've set up two active low push buttons. I've set them up to be active low by putting the signals through an inverter. The long mono stable timer should be on for about five seconds, so I've used different values of RC than I did for the other one, and the short one should be only on for two seconds. What I've also done, other than just putting diagnostic LEDs on each one, is to label them so that when I'm building the rest of the circuit, I can kind of keep track of which one is which. So the most important pins after we've built these are going to be pins two and three on each of the 555 timers. Pin two is the trigger, and pin three is the output. So we're going to have to keep track of that. The trigger pins are labeled in the lab as being TS and TL, and the outputs are labeled as being L and S. So now that we've built the timers, what we can do is put together the finite state machine. The outputs from these are going to be inputs to the finite state machine, and outputs of the finite state machine are going to be inputs to the 555 timer. So we're going to have to be very careful and make we use clever uh, use of wire colors to kind of keep track of everything. Once we've done that, we're going to make sure that our finite state machine stays in the correct states during each transition, and then we'll put everything together, build our synchronous outputs, and get a fully functioning traffic light circuit. Point, I've confirmed that my finite state machine works. I don't have my synchronous outputs yet, so I don't have the uh, green, yellow, and red lights on yet, but what I've done is I've kind of implemented all of that feedback, and I have my, uh, I have my monostable timer outputs, and I have my state machine states. So these values of the LED are going to depend on your state assignments. They might be different if you pick different state assignments than me. What I've done to try to make this a little bit simpler was to label my logic gates. And in fact, I even wrote little notes about which was included on the outputs and inputs of each of my gates, because this is just, as I've mentioned a couple times, a difficult circuit to really break down. So that the best thing 
to make it simpler is going to be to stay organized and just be very prepared for everything. Know what all of your equations need to be. I've had to include a clock signal from my function generator because my D flip flop needs them. I recommend having a fast clock. Mine is about 500 Hertz right now. It doesn't need to be super, super fast, but um, the faster it is, the more accurate it's going to be. So essentially what happens is that um, this function generator clock sets the sample rate and every, uh, so 500 times per second, it's going to be checking. Uh, am I still in this, am I still in the long timer? Am I still in the long timer? Yes or no, right? And then it's gonna say, am I still in the short timer? Am I still in the short timer? Yes or no. Um, and then that's going to help dictate that change, those changes in states in order to go from red light, yellow light, green light. So the slower the clock is, the less accurately we're going to be sampling the amount of time we're in each state. Okay, so just a faster clock is just gonna give us more accurate timing on our actual states when we go from integrating this into our red light, yellow light, green lights. So really the next part should be pretty straightforward. All we have to do now is build our synchronous outputs, which expressions should be pretty straightforward. Um, they're not gonna require a heck of a lot of logic gates, but it's really important to get this part done first before working on those synchronous outputs, just so that you know that everything's working fine before moving on to the next step. we now have a fully functional traffic light circuit. So all I did between the last step and here was to put together the synchronous outputs. So I already knew that my timers were working. I already knew that the states were correct. Uh, and once we know that all that asynchronous stuff is working, then we can put together the synchronous stuff. I kept my diagnostic LEDs in until the very last, just in case something came up where things weren't working, I could use them to help me debug things. I also kept notes on this little notepad about the color of wires that I used. So A, A prime, B and B prime each had their own color that helped me keep track of things. And I also kept track of what values I had going into my AND gates and which LED corresponded to the main street versus the side street. So again, just that organization helps to make this circuit a lot easier. I think this is one of my favorite circuits that we do all semester, just because it's so clear uh, how applicable this is to everyday life. Now, most traffic light circuits are much more complicated than this. There's turn arrows and crosswalks and all sorts of different things that our circuit doesn't really do, but it still gives you a good feel for how digital logic can be used to do just about anything. All right, folks, that's all there is to the traffic light state machine. Until next time, stay well.